Hello everyone, my name is Elena aka Minty Mito. Welcome to my channel where I do random fun art videos and talk about whatever's on my mind. And for today's video, we are doing the fourth installment of a monthly series I started where I draw Sonic OCs that you guys have submitted to me via a Google form, which will be linked in the description if you are interested in submitting your own OC for the chance to have them maybe drawn in a future video. Emphasis on chance. Emphasis on maybe. There are hundreds of submissions. I can only do five a month. Just keep that in mind. Thank you. In the previous video, video in this series, I mentioned at the end how I wasn't quite satisfied with the quality of the drawings. They were good, but I knew I could do better, and so I said I was going to spend some time studying and practicing to improve, and you guys, I've done it! I am so proud of how these OCs turned out, and it makes me really excited for future installments of this series. I'll be talking about how I changed my approach this time around, and hopefully you guys can also see the improvement. And if you're also an artist, maybe there's some tips you can pick up from my learning journey as well. So let's jump into it! Hello, welcome to the time lapse everyone. I am truly so excited to show you guys these OCs. I actually ended up pulling an all-nighter finishing them and I only got four hours of sleep a couple nights ago while I was drawing them. So I come to you now a little bit sleep deprived but also happy with what I have to show you guys. As always I'll be discussing each OC and whatever info was given to me about them, my thoughts during the process, and I'll also be talking about the things I did throughout to improve upon the drawings from my last video. And if the person who submitted wanted their social media to be shared, their info will be on the screen during their time lapse, but this first submission didn't include any, so we can just go ahead and start talking about her OC. So here we have Sakura the Rabbit, submitted by Dakota, and Sakura doesn't have any powers per se, but she is a martial artist, and she also carries around a weapon, which is basically a stick with a chaos emerald mounted on it, and she actually became a martial artist to take after her mom, who unfortunately died when Sakura was really young. So a fairly brief but tragic backstory. The reference image that I got didn't fully match the description I was given, and this has happened with a few submissions, I usually just take my best guess and go more based on the description since the reference image I feel like could possibly be outdated. Some key differences include that instead of a purple bow like the reference, Sakura has a pink scarf and also that she is supposed to be wearing two rainbow bracelets. This is a very purple heavy design and while I like the reference image, I was worried that I would have trouble balancing this monochromatic palette and I was also worried that the rainbow bracelets would look too flashy but once I actually added them in, I felt like they really pulled the whole look together so good thinking on that Dakota. I did work on all the OCs at the same time and bounced around them with each step, but since this OC was the first one I started for this video, I kind of used it as a place to experiment with the style I was going to be going for. My main issue with my designs from the last video was that I wasn't really happy with the line art, and honestly this has been a recurring theme with all my art lately, so I knew I wanted to address that right away and figure out my approach to the line art for this video. I spent a good chunk of time this month studying the line art from the Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog game artwork and the ID comics, but I also looked at a lot of my older works where I felt happier with how the art turned out, and I took that information and applied it to these Sonic OCs. One thing I was really experimenting with on Sakura was how textured I wanted my brush to be, and I also watched a Cosmic Spectrum video recently where she talked about using different types of brushes depending on what part of the drawing she's doing. So for Sakura here, I decided on a very subtly textured brush for most of the line art, and I used that for the rest of the OCs. And then for her staff, I used a highly textured brush which which I think helps show that it's an item from nature, if that makes sense. Since I did all my artistic experimenting on this OC, I would say Sakura is the one I had the most trouble with, but ultimately, I am happy with how she looks and how I captured her color palette. I maybe got a bit overindulgent with the blend modes, but thank you so much, Dakota, for your submission. Sakura is an adorable OC, and I had a lot of fun drawing her. I really hope that you like how it turned out. Next up, we have Bo the Hedgehog, submitted by Shark Queen. And Bo is another character with a long and very tragic backstory. And honestly, some of the information is pretty dark and potentially triggering, so I'm going to summarize as much as I can and not go into details, but warning here for domestic violence and abuse. I promise I'm going to keep it as light as I can, but feel free to skip to the next OC in the chapters if this topic is particularly painful for you. So Bo has the power of water manipulation, and she's the oldest of three children. She has one younger sister and one younger brother. They were able to do some fun activities together growing up. Bo and her sister both did ballet, and eventually all three siblings got into karate. 
Bo was unfortunately injured during a karate tournament after having to face someone who was cheating and going overboard during the match. She was able to get through the injury eventually, but was not supported by her father during that time, and in general, he was very abusive to Bo, her siblings, and her mom. One day, Bo's father left to a far off place for about a year, and they had very little communication with him during that time. When he returned, he had a brief meal with the family and then ran to the basement. Out of curiosity, Bo followed him downstairs and saw him pull a glowing rock out of his bag. He spotted her soon enough and was immediately filled with rage. Bo ran off to tell her mother what she'd seen, but didn't know that her father was listening to their conversation. That night, their house started to fill with smoke and they realized that it had caught fire. They noticed that their father was missing but focused on just trying to escape the flames, but in the end, Bo was the only survivor. After losing her closest loved ones, Bo ran off into the forest, knowing that she wanted to hide from her horrible father. While living in the woods, she befriended a baby snake and she names her Damascus. Bo and Damascus live in the woods for about a year before they meet Sonic, and he was attempting to swim, but he was failing. As we all know, Sonic's one weakness is water, and since Bo has the power of water manipulation, she was able to easily rescue him, and thus begins their friendship. Wow, what a rich and sad backstory. There's definitely still some mystery to it, which means that there's so much potential for Bo's story, and that's really exciting. Like, what was the glowing rock that her father brought home? A chaos emerald or some other magical item? Was he really the one who set the house on fire? If so, why? And where is he now? Oh, so many questions that I have that I think would make for a really good thriller story and that's amazing. I'm so happy that after so much hardship, Bo was able to meet Sonic and his friends and I'm really glad that your reference images included some of her hanging out with them. Maybe getting a little annoyed, but clearly all in good fun. Bo is such a strong and admirable character and I hope that you continue to have fun in developing her story or even just drawing her in more wholesome scenes with friends because that's what she deserves at the end of the day. In terms of the process, I had so much fun drawing Bo because I feel like I was really getting the hang of doing this line art, really varying the line weights but keeping it fairly thin overall and thus being able to have so much more detail compared to my last video. I also experimented with how I wanted to depict her water powers so I used the liquify tool a lot and I'm very pleased with the final image. Thanks again Shark Queen for your submission, I really hope that you like my version of her. Next up, we have Maverick the Cow, submitted by Ren. And fun fact about Maverick, she's actually a vampire. She's a former member of Gun and was forcefully removed from the organization after snooping into their private records. Since then, they formed a gang known as the Fanged Cows that patrols Central City, interfering with Gun's secret dealings, acting in kind of a Robin Hood fashion. One day, during one of her night walks through the city, she was ambushed by another one of Ren's OCs named Daisy the Vampire Bat, and that's how she got vampire. So firstly, I immediately fell in love with this character design. I love being able to do animals that are a bit out of the ordinary, and I haven't seen a cow OC before, so that by itself made me so hype, but like this look, she is stunning. My favorite part is the multiple colors in their hair and tail. They look so cool in their outfit and the attitude. Everything about this design is phenomenal, so of course I had the best time with it. Her backstory is so fun too. I love the idea of vampires existing in the Sonic universe. I mean, it makes sense, right? In Sonic Unleashed, he literally got turned into a werehog, so why not have vampires? And I'm really pleased with how this one turned out, especially the line art and the coloring. Just everything really came together. I am very happy with the quality. I was worried that Maverick's all-black outfit would make it hard to show the details, but I think I was able to make it work. I also realize now that I added so many curves to the boots, making them look kind of baggy and loose. I'm not sure why I did that. The reference doesn't look like that. Maybe I was just getting too into the zone and having fun with it, and I almost forgot to add the earring at the end, but thank god I didn't because it really pulls everything together. I don't have much else to say except that I love this OC. I had so much fun drawing her. Thank you, Ren, for your submission. You are so creative and I'm really happy I got the opportunity to draw a unique OC like this. Next up, we have Alexander slash Alexi the Wolf, submitted by Shoelace. And what's funny is under the power section, Shoelace wrote that unless you count swag style as a power, I'm afraid he has none, <laughs> which is really funny. Alexi actually has a really cute and wholesome backstory, so I'm excited to share it. Uh, Shoelace said that this is an old OC, so his story's changed a bit over the years, but basically he's Sonic's childhood best friend from his home island. When Sonic left the island at a fairly young age, they had no way of contacting each other for years. Eventually, Alexander ends up moving to to the city where Team Sonic resides and starts going by the nickname Alexi. He was living an average, normal teenager life, then one day when he and his friends were hanging out at a local cafe, Alexi ends up bumping into Sonic there. They immediately recognize each other, but it's Sonic's reaction of, wait, 
Alexander, that gets Alexi to respond with confidence and confirm that they indeed know each other because Alexi was basically denying that he knew Sonic. He'd always recognized him, but since Sonic had become a world famous renowned hero, he would kind of brush it off thinking like, no, the guy from my childhood, surely that's not the Sonic the Hedgehog. But having Sonic actually remember and recognize him is what got him to fully finally believe his past self. They end up catching up at the cafe and a fun side note, Cream the Rabbit's mom, Vanilla, works there. So that's why Sonic is there. They end up rekindling their friendship and sharing contact info so that way they can actually stay in touch. So now Alexi and Sonic usually voice call or stream and play video games together whenever Sonic is able to be at home. Alexi has a Twitch and Shoelace feels like he would convince Sonic to get one too so that they can stream together. They also like to dress up together. Sonic likes Alexi's emo kawaii goth style and would like to dress similarly but he hasn't really put effort into that part of himself in a long time since he's always off fighting Eggman. But that's why Alexi is there to help and lightly and affectionately pressure him to do these kinds of things. Alexi is a character that's basically an escape for Sonic to just be a regular teen for a bit. And this is such a sweet backstory for a character. I love the idea of Sonic having a friend that is able to push him to do activities outside of saving the world or being a hero. I like how simple and cute Alexi's design is. I really wanted to incorporate his love for fashion or gaming into my drawing and I decided on fashion. I drew him holding up a shirt on a hanger, maybe one that he's picked out for Sonic to wear. In terms of the art process, this one went by really smoothly. I think I had a clear vision for it from the start and I was able to execute it so I'm very happy about that. I decided to add a halftone texture at the end to finish it and I really enjoy how that looks and how it turned out and I'm also really happy with the posing and the overall coloring I did for this one. Thank you Shoelace for your submission. It was really great reading about Alexi's wholesome backstory. He is so cute and I really hope that you like my drawing of him. And last but not least, we have a very colorful and unique OC with a sad backstory. Her name is Abri the Lion Fox, submitted by Andre the Terminator. For her powers, she's able to run really fast, jump really high, and create weapons made out of chaos energy, as well as enhance weapons and tools using chaos energy. In terms of her backstory, Abri is a girl who was born in Westopolis. She is a lion fox hybrid. Her mother was a fennec fox and her dad was a lion. Abri was born to the chaos blacksmith family who are known for their special ability to give weapons and tools chaos energy and enhance them. At the age of 10, her parents were unfortunately killed by the Black Arms when they showed up and attacked Westopolis. For those who don't know, the Black Arms are the aliens that invaded during the Shadow of the Hedgehog game. She unfortunately, she sadly has PTSD from seeing her family killed during this invasion. I was surprised that a character this bright and colorful would have such a sad backstory. I feel like Avery would be a character that other people definitely underestimate based on her looks. Andre didn't specify her personality, but I imagine that since she went through such a traumatic event, as a child that she'd be fairly on edge, maybe a bit distrusting of others, and quick to defend herself against any possible threats. Plus, on top of that, the concept of her powers are really cool, so with all that in mind, I knew I wanted it to be more of a powerful or defensive pose, as if she's about to shield herself from an attack. The whole process was pretty simple, especially at this point, I had done so much work on the other OCs, but I really didn't know how I was going to depict her powers. I had a lot of fun with the liquify tool so far, so I ended up just using that, and I think that was a good call. I also added some chromatic aberration to really add that sense of mystique and power, like I don't know what she's about to do, but you better go hide. And I'm actually really happy with how she turned out. I love how vibrant her color palette is contrasted with such a dark past. Thank you so much Andre for your submission. Avery really has a fun design and a really really cool set of powers, so I hope that you like how I depicted her. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that I wasn't overhyping my drawing improvements and that you guys were also able to see my increased confidence with this set of drawings. Hopefully, if you're an artist as well, I was able to provide some helpful insight into my drawing process. I did have someone request that I do a Sonic character drawing tutorial for a future video. So if that's something you'd like to see me do, please let me know in the comments, especially if there's anything specific about drawing Sonic characters that you have trouble with, like their eyes, body proportions, how to color them, etc. I would love to know so that I can address that if I do end up making a tutorial video. I'm feeling pretty tired. I know I shouldn't have stayed up all night the other night and that's my own fault. <laughs> um, every time I do it, I convince myself that I'll be fine, but as you get older, all-nighters are just not feasible and it really affects how I function for the next several days. So I'm gonna try to prioritize sleep so that I can keep doing videos. But anyways, if you like this video, please like it and let me know in the comments which of these OCs was your favorite. If you'd like to further support me, I have a Ko-fi page where you can tip or commission me. Either is very much appreciated, especially 
especially because now my hours at work keep getting cut down. It's stressing me out a bit, but you know, I can't let that stop me. So if you'd like to see more of me, you can follow my socials. I post about YouTube stuff on my Instagram stories and I've been getting more active on TikTok. So feel free to check those out. I have other important links, including the link to the Sonic OC forum and my BLM art fundraiser in the description. So please check those out if you are interested. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.